As promised, I'm joined now by Republican Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska. Frank Luntz, political strategist and pollster, is also the author of the book Words That Work. It's not what you say, it's what people hear. Gentlemen, thank you. You are repeat guests of ours, so I'm honored to have you both here. Yeah. Congressman, let me start with you. Is this, am I just full of ivory tower, New York media BS thinking that people are concerned about these matters? Because every time I talk to an elected official, Republican or Democrat or a candidate, they tell me people don't talk about this stuff, Allie. People talk about gas prices. They talk about wages. They're not really concerned about this broader implications about democracy and election denial and stuff. Do you have these conversations with your constituents that I'm talking about? Well, first of all, thanks for having me back on. I, I appreciate it. I've been a regular and I'm grateful for that. And I do. Th it's clear, Allie, that inflation and gas prices are the number one issues out here in Nebraska. But also people want civility. They want their country to work. They're tired of the like hyper-partisanship, civil war mindset. So they are looking for people that you know, can be conservative and fight for their values, but also know that you gotta reach across the aisle and find consensus and make our country work. That's the way James Madison designed our form of governments to seek consensus. He designed it so that no one faction could control government, which means you gotta work and find areas of commonality. So I, yes, inflation and gas prices are two to one top issue, but also they want their country to work and they want decency and civility and they, they see a lack of it. All right, that's heartening. Uh, Frank Luntz, I, I mean, I know you don't agree with this, but, um, you know, after this weekend, once we get the ratings, we can look at what happened in this segment. And I, I think some people probably switched off, but I don't think they should. Um, and, and part of it is you make the point you write about words, the way we talk about things, the way things uh, how we mean things and how other people hear things. And you're saying that if we could be a little bit more cautious or thoughtful about the way we talk, that could bridge this divide a little bit, maybe kind of sort of. Well, let me give you an example. Congressman's on right now. He talked about consensus. What the public is looking for is cooperation. He got the right uh, letter, but slightly wrong. Another example is that you'll find much more support if you talk about assistance to the poor, because that's the result, rather than talking about welfare, which is the process. And the amazing thing for me is that my book was actually purchased by more Democrats than Republicans that I have more trouble talking to those on the right than I do on the left because the left, quite frankly, often communicates more effectively because they talk from the heart, because they talk with emotion and passion. They, I would argue that the governing isn't working the way they talk, that Joe Biden ran as Harry Truman, a genuine uh, uh, cooperation and compromise that he sought to govern his FDR and his polling numbers are the same as Jimmy Carter right now. But in the end, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and you do what you say. That's what the American people are looking for. Congressman, you and I normally talk policy when we come on, and we will do that again because I always enjoy that. That's that's actually where my heart is. But I've been with this network for, uh, I don't know, six years or something like that. I used to have Republican elected members on my show all the time, and we would have good, reasonable discussions, and sometimes we'd have arguments, and sometimes they'd devolve into fights. But they came on. That doesn't happen all that much anymore. You're, you're one of a, a small number of people who will regularly come on and, and have a good discussion. I want to ask you how I do better with getting more people into discussion and whether it costs you anything to be on my show. Well, Ali, I think if other Republicans see how you respond with me, I think you're fair. You try to get both sides with me, and I'm grateful for that. And I think you also give me a chance to answer tough questions. I've been on other shows where you get asked a tough question and you get interrupted you know, continuously. I think you're very respectful in how you do it. And I think it's very important for folks like me to come on MSNBC, CNN, and also try to reach out to the other side and say, I mean, if we're only speaking to the our own side, to our own choir, we're not growing our tent. And I want, the, I want folks in the middle, moderate Democrats, to know that there's a home uh, here with me and in our party. And uh, I believe that the Republican Party should be a party of values, a party of ideas, not focused on individuals. And I think, and, and it shows that we can win. We won 15 seats last election with conservative principles, but the voters also want someone who's respectful, uh, treats people uh, with decency. They want optimism. Uh, they want a restored faith in America. And I believe that our party needs to communicate that more. And by the way, it's good to always be on with Frank Lutz. I've uh, enjoyed meeting with him many times. And I, I consider him a good friend. 
Frank, wh- where do we get to with this? Because one of the things I hear from people, um, mostly on the left, because that's where most of my conversations exist, is how am I supposed to have conversations with people who are fundamentally uh, disrespectful of what I stand for or who I might be? Um, how do you have conversations with people where the goal isn't going to be that you're going to agree or the goal isn't going to be necessarily that you're going to defeat them in the next election. But the goal is that you are going to do what this country was based on and and be a pluralistic nation in which we can respect each other's views without actually sharing each other's views about politics, food, religion, sexuality, gender, any of these things. Well, you have to want to learn. You have to be curious. My a majority of my friends. So I will tweet this out. And you're going to see the same kind of partisan break where, by the way, Republicans complain that I'm not partisan enough. Democrats complain that I'm too partisan. Those on the left say that I don't really understand how they feel. Those on the right say that I reject how they feel. Well, I must be doing something right if both sides are angry. I, let me just give you some advice. You, you Twice at the beginning of this segment, you talked about people turning this off. This is exactly the opposite message. I spent a lot of time watching MSNBC. I worked for MSNBC for five years, and I even won the only Emmy Award that the MSNBC won in 2001. I've been on this network. I want to hear what the left and the right say. I want this combination. I love being surrounded by people who disagree with me, and Ali, you should be promoting that. Here's a chance to hear what the other side says, but truth is, I wouldn't even call it the other side. Here's a different perspective. If we divide ourselves by Republican and Democrat, if we divide ourselves by the other side, then we are automatically causing this rift and this division. And if I can put a little bit of solemn thought to you all, the number one reform that the public is looking for, even more than health care, even more than taxes, is our democracy itself. It is under threat. It is under attack. And if we don't do a better job, maybe not agreeing with each other, but yeah. at least hearing each other out, we're in real trouble. Don Bacon, how does that conversation go with some of your colleagues? Because some of the stuff that, um, and, and I don't mean this to be partisan, but some of the stuff that Republicans are doing these days could must make you cringe in the morning. Well, we have hyper-partisanship on both sides, Hallie. That's the thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I hear tons of hate from the left and a lot of false accusations. You got, you know, like the state Democratic chair here calling people racist and anti-Semitic uh, on the other side. And that doesn't help either. That's, it's hard to work with someone when they're calling you racist and anti-Semitic. And, but that's on the left. But we have also people on the right that say no compromise. You can't give an inch. Well, that doesn't work either. Uh, this system of government requires that we have to find areas. Okay. I'll use Frank's word cooperation areas that we can agree. If we can agree on 50% of the fixes on the border, Let's fashion legislation to get 50 percent done. I think a half loaf of bread versus demanding 100 percent and getting zero. And that's what's going on in Congress right now. We see for for the most part, there's a few exceptions. Both sides want 100 percent. They won't take 50 percent. And then we get very little done. Which, by the way, that cedes power to the president who fills that void with executive orders and as well as the judicial branch. Congress is losing power because we've lost the art of finding agreement and cooperation and consensus. And we need to re-get, we need to have a, we need to be a third equal share of government, but we've lost that. This is a very important make, uh, conversation that you, you have that is for another time, because we're out of time now, uh, about whether Congress can maintain its power. Thanks to both of you. What a great conversation. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Uh, and, and we will have you both back on for this. Republican Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska, Frank Luntz is a political strategist and pollster.